Hi, I'm Maddie Girl and I want to be a superhero. And this week the superpower that I'm trying to get is the power of super sleuthing. I've been thinking about solving the great lost cookie crime and my mind keeps returning to this clue. Whoever took my cookies left behind this crumbled up tissue stained with what appears to be ink. Their pen must have leaked when they were taking the cookie. Little did they know, this ink stain could tell me who done it. Did you know that black ink is actually made up of a mixture of different coloured inks, like blue, green, red and yellow? And this mixture absorbs so much of the light that hits it and it reflects very little that we just see it as black. I think we can use science to help us to clarify the criminal cookie caper. We need the power of chromatography. Chromatography is the science of separating out parts of a mixture. We would figure out the different colour pigments that make up this black ink from the pen and compare it to other pens to see if any of them match. That way we would know whose pen it was and who stole the cookie. I'm going to make my own super chromatography lab and find out what sort of pen this light-fingered food-pinching fiend favours. For this experiment, you will need a piece of absorbent paper, like kitchen paper, ruler, wooden skewer, some felt tip pens, tape, blue tack, paper clips, scissors, scrap of paper or card, string, something to hold your water in, and a box. A cereal box or a shoe box is totally fine. We're going to start by making one of our paper straws. Now we know how to do this, and we're going to use this as a guide for a string later on. So wrap your paper or card around your flout tip and then tape it into a tube shape. And you're going to want to cut these into about three centimeter strips and just cut those off so you can have two three centimeter strips. Perfect, we'll put these aside for later. Next take your box, if it's got a lid open it up and stand it on its end like this. You're not going to need the lid for this but you can use it to keep your lab safe. We're going to use a skewer to poke a hole in one of the long sides of our box, near what is going to be the top of our lab. So measure the depth of the box. My box is 11 centimetres. And find the halfway point for that. So halfway of 11 is five and a half. I'll mark that here. And now measure one centimetre down from the top, along that halfway line. And that is going to be where you put your mark and push your skewer through. Now wiggle it around to widen that hole a little bit and then push it all the way through to the other side and you want to draw a line along where your skewer would track. Pull the skewer back out. Now take your string and fold it in half. You're going to need two metres of string for this. And so if I fold it in half, each length is going to be one metre. Take your tubes and push the string through them, making sure that the bit that you folded comes through like this. There's one and there's the other one. So we've got these through here. Now you're going to tie a knot in the end of your string where it folded over. Make sure it's a big knot so that the tubes can't fall through. Okay, so now we've got our two straws, our tied end and our loose ends over here. Take your box and where you put your hole over here with your skewer, you're going to take the open ends and you're going to push those through that hole. So you might need your skewer to help you push it through. Now pull that through a little bit and you're going to be left with your two straw tubes here. You're going to take one onto one side of the top of the box and one to the other side of the top of your box. So now these are secure. We're now going to make a batten. And so your batten is going to be made out of your wooden skewer. And this is going to hold our chromatography samples when they're in testing. We're going to need to make sure that the skewer is just slightly smaller than the inside of the box. So I'm going to say it's about there. And now take your string that has the big knot in the end and cut the end with the knot off. So you'll have two pieces of string. Take one of these pieces of string and tie it around the end of your skewer. Probably want to double knot if you can to make sure it doesn't fall off. There we go, we've got one end tied. Now you're going to pull your string through and the bit of string that isn't tied to your skewer, 
pull on it until it just comes out of the first straw. Now tie this to the other end of your skewer, also in a double knot. Okay, so now we have attached our string and our skewer together. What we want to do is make sure that our string falls vertically down, so you might need to move it left or right across, and that your string lengths are even. And once you have that, you want to tie a knot in the end of your string so that the string can't slide past each other and it will make the skewer wonky. Now, when you're happy with that, take a little bit of blue tack and add it onto where your string and your skewer meet. That's going to stop them sliding. Next, take your leftover bit of skewer and poke it somewhere about halfway through the box and secure with a little bit of blue tack. And this is going to act as a peg so that we can tie off our baton when it's at the right height. Next, we're going to need to make some samples. So cut some strips of kitchen paper and next you're going to need the pens that you're going to test. Now Nana and Nana Girl collected these pens from the baddies. So we know hopefully if we find the pen, then maybe we find the cookie thief. Draw a large spot at the bottom of your strip of paper. One strip of paper for each pen that you are testing. Next, paper clip your samples to the baton so that they hang down. Okay, I'm going to pull these up for now, tie them off. Next, put your containers in the bottom of the box, underneath your samples, and then pour some water into your containers. Next, you're going to untie your string from the peg and move the baton down to lower the samples into the water just for a couple of seconds. Now, you don't want to immerse the samples all the way in. Just wet, wet the bottoms and then pull them back up and tie them off. So we're going to wait about five minutes. Now, different inks are made up of different sizes and shapes of molecule. As they are wicked up the absorbent paper, they will separate to reveal the secret composition of the ink. Okay, five minutes. Let's see what happens. Now for the moment of truth. Here is my original clue from the thief. You can see that after we've done the chromatography test to it, the colours of the black dot actually separated into blues and greens and red. Now we have to compare those to the ones that we tested in our box. So let's take a look here. This was originally the brown pen. And we can compare the two and see that the colours of the brown pen are made up from greens and blues and some reds. Definitely not the same pen. So let's take a look at the black pen. And if we put these two together, look, we can see we've got a match. We've got the blues and the greens at the top and the reds down at the bottom. That means that this was the pen that made the same stain found in our cookie jar. Hold on. Hey, Nana Nana Girl, where did you find this pen? Inside the lab, inside this lab. That's weird. You just found it lying around. Huh. And you don't know whose pen it is, but it's definitely not yours. Well, I guess it can't be yours because it, it's way too big for you, but that is suspicious. How did this pen from my lab get into the stain for the cookie taker? Hmm, we're going to need more detective skills to solve this one. I will see you next time as we try to solve the great cookie caper.